On September 21st, I was reading the New York Times, and suddenly, this article grabbed my attention. At the age of 18, a teenager lost his life when a teacher secretly put a camera in his dorm and started spying on him. And the secret of the teenager was revealed to the whole school through the use of social media. The bullying got so intense that it caused him to put an end to his life. The secret, he was gay. Why? Why should something so small become such a big problem? The movement and Royal Society for Public Health found that since social media has arrived, bullying, depression, and isolation has been getting worse. The platforms br that bring us so much joy can bring just as much or even more harm. Nearly everyone in this room is addicted to technology. I know I am. And as technology improves and social media becomes more addictive, more people become constant checkers. They become a someone who has the urge to check their phone, even if they haven't received any message or notification. I'm sure that most of you want to check your phone now to see if your friends texted you or posted new pictures. Well, according to mirror.co.uk, a survey found that 66% of the people in the UK, Italy, Spain, and France post pictures to make it look like their lives are better than others. And 52% of the people in the UK responded that they post pictures to make their friends jealous. And it's not hard to imagine, really. We want our lives to appear better than what they are, for people to see us in a certain way. And this is where people start to write comments that could offend people. Could be because there is the slightest hint of jealousy. Could be because they find us photoshopped. The options are endless, but the person will get bullied, depressed, or isolated. Now, you should think of this like a chain. When something happens, everything else gets affected. So say that someone decides to comment something unsavory on a post by Steven. Other people see it and they laugh at it because maybe to them it's a joke. But to Steven, it's awful. He thinks about taking it down. But what if that draws more attention to it? He thinks on telling on the bullies. But what if they find out? Nobody likes a snitch. So as time passes, Steven slowly isolates himself, still checking new comments, even though he doesn't want to read them. He doesn't talk to anyone, so he becomes isolated. Now, there is a major difference between depression and isolation, because according to mayoclinic.org, depression is the sad thoughts that are racing through your mind and the continuous feeling of sadness, while isolation is when you just don't talk to anyone and ignore everyone around. For example, when you're playing a game on your phone, you're concentrated that you ignore everyone else. However, the solution is simple. All you have to do is disconnect. This act can feel like blinding an eye. It can be scary and easy to talk yourself out of. But in this way, you have a chance to experience the real world. Because according to the University of Pittsburgh, Constant checkers are 2.7 times more likely to develop some form of depression. But it's not always easy letting go. But give it a shot. Ignore that impulse to see if that notification you were waiting for popped up. Turn the phone off and stop waiting for that burst of light to come from it because too much technology can cause severe depression and isolation. And let it go for a minute and two and three and 60, and then go without it for a day. Just let it go for today. Thank you.